Welcome to Uncut Angling. I'm Aaron Weeb. I was just up at Wacusco Falls Lodge and I have now gotten back to Winnipeg. You can see I am in suburbia here with a bounty of whitefish that I caught yesterday. I'm relying on my friend Ken to help us show how to prepare them. What are we going to do today, Ken? They travel on the whitefish. So many people don't appreciate them. But the first thing we got to do is get them in the freezer. Okay. You caught them, one 18 hours ago, something like that? Yeah, probably yeah, less than a day ago. I hope you took good care of them, Aaron. I took good care of them. What is the process we're actually doing called? We've got to pressure can them. Pressure canning. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. That is such a good way to preserve fish, certain fish. Okay. You can do it to trout is good, pike is good. The pressure canning process softens all the bones. So even if it's a very bony fish, people pressure can suckers all the time. And it's, you know, you wouldn't think so, but I know, but I haven't done it either. But, uh, oh, 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 nice job, Aaron. This is perfect. Just like a real commercial fisherman. No kidding. This is so perfect. They're going to be like sushi quality. So step one to this process is catching the whitefish, which I have taken care Probably of. Probably the most important. Well, you don't get part. to step two ever unless you do step <laughs> exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> step two is, as Ken instructed me, immediately taking care of your catch. And what I did with that is I took the heads off, I took the guts out, and then I packed it in ice right away, not snow. You can see this is actually broken up ice. Snow is fluffy and has air in it and it robs heat of things. It's gotta be ice. We don't know exactly why. We don't have a science background. These fish need to be frozen ASAP. And the reality is when you're in the right. field, you can't freeze them ASAP, but you can gut them and get them on ice. And now step three is what Ken is gonna take over and show us. <sighs> A lot of grunting. Let's get these in the house. Get them in some vacuum bags. Is that heavy, Ken? It might be for you, but I can have one. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah. We got them in the sink here. Like these are basically perfect. Got the guts taken out. Before I took it out, it looked like a bloodline that runs right underneath the spine, but you're saying that's yeah, the kidney? Yeah, it's like a bloodline, but it's actually the fish's kidney. You can usually just take your thumbnail and scrape it right out. And a lot of people won't take that out, but obviously you want them like clean like that. Like that is so nice. Vacuum packing to me is the way everything should be frozen. Fish, venison, goose breasts. Even my wife will go buy pork chops and I'll, I'll vacuum pack them before I put them in the freezer. You know, if you take care of it when you get it, you can eat that fish next year. You know what? The one other thing you could have done is cut the tail off just because it takes up room in the vacuum bag and you don't eat the tail. I use this thing so much now, I actually buy my vacuum bags in a big roll and you can cut them to size. Of course, it's open-ended. So what you do first of all is seal one end. See, the light comes on. It's going to go off right now. So it's actually melting that plastic and forming a bottom of the bag. Put them in like that. I'm going to do another one. Exactly. Perfect. Now for the magic. This is the vacuum chamber in here. This is the melting strip there. Go like that. Push the button right here. You got the bag. All the air is getting drawn out. It automatically senses that there's no more air to come out and it'll seal the bag and the fish will be vacuumed. That is the beauty of vacuum sealing. Put this in the freezer, two years from now, that will be just as tasty and fresh as it is right now. Okay, just follow me. Where they can sit for months and months. So that's the first three steps. And those fish will be good for two years from now, no matter what you want to do with them. Welcome back, Aaron. It's about time. We're only 14 months later down the road here. This is now uh, May 2019. Here's the white fish you brought me last spring. Okay, here we are. This fish has been thawing out for about three hours now. We're ready to start processing it. What step is this, Ken? Uh, I've kind of lost track here, and there's so many steps here. Uh, this would be step, uh, step four. Let's take these fillets off. Running the knife along the back room. There you go. Isn't that meat nice for 14 month old fish? Just trimming off the fins and stuff, cleaning up the fillet, you know. I'm going to take the ribs off right away. The neat thing about this canning is that any fish, really, you don't have to worry about the pin bones or the Y bones or anything because I guess it cooks at such a high temperature. It's not only killing all the bacteria, but after they come out of the canning process, the bones are gone. It's like they were never there. Take the skin off. There we go. Look at that. Uh, what step are we on? Five. How many are there in total? 20. Everybody's got their own favorite brine. I kind of stick with this. Normally, I would use one cup of sugar, one cup of salt, four quarts of water, which is like a gallon of water. This is just regular brown sugar. Nothing fancy about it. Put a tablespoon of garlic powder in there. 
It doesn't matter. It's not rocket science. Then I'm gonna put some water in here. You wanna use cold water. Stir it up and dissolve that sugar and salt. Now we're gonna cut these fillets up into sort of manageable sized pieces and put them in the brine. The fish was cleaned up, it's sitting in the brine. So I'm just gonna run this, put it out in the garage. <laughs> what step is this? <laughs> Ken, let me in! Hey buddy. Hey Max. Maxie, come on, in the house. Looking good at the fish. Welcome to step six. Okay, here we go. Here's the fish, and it's firmed up a lot. Take it on some of that salt and sugar flavor. Now I'm just gonna rinse it off in the sink here and get all this liquid off, rinse it off with some fresh water. Just a light little rinse is enough, just like that. I can do six jars at a time in this thing. Now the fun starts, Aaron. This is a pressure counter. Now the whole purpose of cooking fish in a pressure counter is that under pressure, water boils at a higher temperature. If you're making pickles, vegetables, canning them like your grandma did on the stove, the temperature inside those jars is only gonna go to 212 degrees. And the jars do seal on everything, but you haven't killed potentially any botulism organisms that could be on the fish or the meat. And that is a bad thing, that is deadly, actually. You can Google it if you like, and you'll find repeatedly, do not do fish or meat outside of a pressure counter. I'm gonna put water in there. I'm gonna fill it about half full, put that on the stove. The lids for the jars have like a rubber liner around there. That's to help it seal on the jar. If you don't have a vacuum in there and a sealed jar, it's not gonna last for years like it normally would. So I'm gonna just put that on the stove and bring it to a gentle boil. Let that rubber soften up. Now what I'm gonna do is put a teaspoon of liquid smoke in each jar, just to give it a little hint of smoked fish. People put things like jalapeno peppers in there, a slice of onion, a clove of garlic I've heard of. Only put the fish about that high in the jar because it could expand and if it expands too much, you can blow the bottom off of jars. I usually keep like the end pieces, tail pieces to fill in any gaps that are in there. Try to get as much air out of there as we can, like so. And you just go through the process like this, stuffing them in there as much as you can with a half inch of headspace at the top. Like I said, it's super important to keep everything as sterile as possible. So take a little bit of vinegar, paper towel, and you clean the rims of the jars with a little bit of vinegar. You want that to be super clean so you get a good seal. And the vinegar at the same time sterilizes the rim of the jar. And properly prepared like this, this fish will last like decades. Make sure you got a lot of jars of canned fish in your bomb shelter. Now, remember these lids that I put in the boiling water to soften and sterilize the lids. Put them on the jar. And you can crank them down pretty hard, like a, a hard finger tightening kind of thing. These are looking good already, buddy. I haven't had any canned fish since the last time I had some. Being careful not to touch anything unnecessarily. Because your hands aren't clean? Well, who knows where my hands have been, Aaron. I'm gonna put them in the counter. Now something that's kind of cool you're gonna see is the amount of juice that comes out of this fish. Like right now, all that's in there is a teaspoon of liquid smoke. They're gonna be full of fish juice. So there we go. It actually locks on. Now I'm gonna bring it to a boil, put it on high. Ah! Now it's been venting steam for five or six minutes. I'm gonna put this little bobblehead weight on here. Now pressure is rising inside the canner. The pressure will go up to 10 PSI and the bobblehead will start releasing steam again. That's when I start timing. That's when the actual pressure cooking begins. <laughs> yeah, okay, see? See what it's doing now? Yeah. Okay. The pressure has risen to 10 PSI in there. I'm going to turn the heat down to medium. When it gets to be above 10 PSI, that raises and releases a little bit of pressure in there. Now I'm going to set the timer for one hour and 50 minutes, and it's going to pressure cook the jars in there and the fish in the jars for an hour and 50 minutes. And we'll come back then and it will be ready to take the jars out. It's time. I'm gonna turn the heat off and now let it cool down on its own. You can't even open the lid now. It's locked, it's pressurized, but the pressure is slowly gonna drop. The lock's gonna open and I'll be able to take out the jars of cooked fish. I have to get my little jar picker upper. There's a sinus here. The lock opened. 
That means I could open this because it's no longer under pressure. Ta-da! There you go. Canned whitefish. These aren't sealed yet. But as the temperature goes down in the jars, there's a little indentation on the lids. The pressure goes down, so it's pulling down. It creates a vacuum in there eventually. Then it makes a noise. The little dimple thing goes down. So that's your guarantee that it has sealed. They all go, make a little click. Well, they've all sealed. They're ready to go. I'll just eat it out of the can. I'll take it with me. I'll eat it up in a tree stand. I'll eat it in a boat. Grab one and open it up in a box of crackers and eat them. You can mush it up and make a, like a sandwich with it. Put some lemon juice in there and whatever you want. There you go. Pressure canning whitefish. Thank you for watching this installment of Cooking with Ken. Any final words, Ken? Drone footage. Drone footage. <laughs> Just something about how it breaks down the cell walls and releases moisture or... I don't have that kind of science background. I mean, a monkey could do this. It's, it's idiot proof. Two monkeys are doing this. <laughs>